that so many filmmakers would rush to do this uh, movie. It's only a month later when I saw that, as a matter of fact, nobody dared uh, doing such a big undertaking. That, uh, that I received some documents and I was so intrigued because it was so mad. I mean, the, 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 this catastrophe was uh, caused by so many details that went wrong. You know, it's much easier. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. And, and therefore, I realized it was a great, uh, a great possibility for a exciting thriller, because it is a thriller. It is. You were saying that nobody dared. <laughs> and that's not so really surprising, no. because when you think about it, that A, it is a huge money is for everyone you know, worldwide. <laughs> but B, you said in the previous interview that for a lot of scenes, yeah. you were burning the set, and you were using up to 10 cameras, so it was a challenge in many ways. Yeah, but that, you know, those challenges are, I think, I was fortunate enough to I've made a lot of movies with a lot of extra, a lot of explosions, lots of fire, lots of stuff. Therefore, this is not that. For me, that was not a difficult challenge. I love uh, big crews, I love taking stuff. I would so much like to prepare my movies for months. Uh, I immerse myself in the subject. I always go to great films. I see very relaxed. You know, the most of the scenes for me as a filmmaker is love scenes. When I shot The Lover, for instance, I was worried because it's so fragile. And while putting a set on fire, you have to be careful, you have to be surrounded by compliment firemen. But uh, it's not that difficult if you prepare it well. If it requires, of course, you cannot improvise. This is something that to be very often storyboard, uh, carefully thought about. Uh, I did a lot of models to explain what we can do. But you say that it's, uh, it's very. Uh, uh, it's very pleasant. What's very pleasant is to have the idea of the movie in your head and then step by step. We must help all the people who build what you have in the Exactly. So this is the story. It's the story. And then comes the making of the music. Did the music play into this creation of this vision? The movie, it's the the movie exploding image. So image first, sound second, in sound, music first, and dialogue second. How is the relationship? Well, it's uh, it, you know I those the five of my movies with James Bond. I was a great friend of James, and unfortunately uh, but I, because I so love him, he's not in the film, but uh, I love his movies with his second job, Simon Frankel. Uh, I mean, obviously, uh, it's a good part that I think that because very often there are also working with this, as you said, after that, see, see what you see with uh, Simon, you know. And uh, it was very touching for me to have the same crew, the same translator, and Simon, who did a good job. And you know, now he's busy on the new camera, the new camera. So, camera also was probably at the same time relationship that we had with James and decided to go with the same team. And, uh, you know, music often, a movie like that is essential. Uh, Simon spent uh, almost a month in my country place in France. We studied the movie, we talked about the effects that we needed. Uh, he has a great partner that is called Dick. Uh, 
in Holstein, who is a remarkable editor and a music editor. Uh, we recorded as Abbey Road with the usual great group of uh, distinguished people from the Holstein Symphony Orchestra, etc. Et so, you know, it's an extraordinary pleasure because I, music is so important for me that I necessarily got my parents. And I need that harmony. So with my composer, because if the music is, is not helping the feelings of the movie, it could be a disaster. And, and, and the music can sometimes rescue me, but very often destroy me. One last question. What is your personal connection, relationship, or feelings for the building? Well, that was the first medieval building I've seen in my life. It's a guy living in a suburb. And uh, every week I was going to live in Paris with my parents. And we were going to uh, a railway station, place in Saint Michel. And the first thing I would see was this cathedral in front of my eyes. And very often, I parents felt that it was appropriate for me to go around, either outside or sometimes inside. And I was very impressed by the beauty of the building, the serenity, and by uh, the impression that it was something special that was a smell and a sense, and then uh, the organ and the colored glass. It, it, it was magical, and I think that's the reason why I decided to. I think that it was very pretentious when I was I wanted to make a book about the unknown church of the Holy and I started to of, of that when I was eight. My second picture was uh, in the Gargoyle Corridor. In and, and then, while I was doing the team school, I took the classes uh, at Institut Michelin, uh, Sorbonne, uh, in medieval art and medieval history. So, there is a connection. And I live near one. I'm very pleased to see you today. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Thank you.